Hello and welcome to another Free Code session. My name is Jason Bach and in the previous episode, which was just two minutes ago for me, <laughs> I realized I needed to push to delegates such that they're being built here at the same spot that the that th this thing is created. In other words, shove these out in here and then you can s see them correctly out here because these are actually outside as well. So they got to be at the same level. Okay, um, which is interesting. Oh, because all of these are put in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what I need to do is what I say, call a mock delegate extension builder. I think that's what I called it. Mock delegate extension. Or just, it's not an extension. Mock delegate builder. Okay. Internal. CL class static. And then we need to come to the this, no, that. Because what we want is essentially this thing out. And we want that here. And we're going to call this internal. Wait, you know. Oh, you suck. You, uh, you were supposed to give me the bring all usings in, but you didn't because you suck. <laughs> Good, they all gone? They all gone. Okay, so we're going to say this is my bill. Okay. And we no longer do this here because that's not needed, okay? So now this goes away. Well, let's make sure though, that we do not forget to do this. <laughs> Mock delegate builder build. Why? Because I forgot to make it internal because I was too focused on this. Writer information, okay. Now we say here, if methods, no, information.methods.length is greater than zero, then we're gonna, we at least have to think about doing this, okay? All right, so now I believe, let's do the unit testy thing. Okay, let's see what this looks like. And then if it works, we're going to have to shut down Visual Studio and start up again. But again, what have, I, what have I been saying lately? That's what you need to do. If you really want to make it as a developer, you have to know when to shut things down and start, it up, start them up again. Because it's not like you, there's like a, a ton of, oh, I have to be super smart, you know. <laughs> Wait, did it just, I don't trust it. Um, there, okay. I don't know what I was just saying, but I think I was trying to say, you know, intelligence helps, but I think a good attitude and a willingness to learn and all that other stuff is, I mean, that's people that I would want to work with are like that. I don't, you know, I'd rather work with somebody that's, you know, willing to put in the hard hours and, and work well and then listen to other people and make suggestions and contribute and all the other stuff. And working with somebody who is really, really smart and a complete, you know, and insert bad word there. <laughs> That's just not, that, that never helps. Okay. All right, so now I think we have these at the right spot. Okay. I believe. And then, because I think that, we're going to stop and we're going to shut down. Okay. Shut down. Okay. So we shut down and now what do we do after we shut down? We start up again. It's kind of like that song, I get knocked down, but I get up, yeah. I shut down, but then I start up again. It's, it's a thing. It really is. 
All right. So we are back. Let's come back here. And here's here's the kicker. Does this test actually run? <laughs> okay. Sometimes just waiting for this to like, there we go. Let's see if it unexpectedly errors or gives me a build failure. Will there, will there be tears in my beer? That's a country song. God dang it. Now what? The up. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I th Don't I have that in my notes here? I thought I did. I thought I did. Um, verify the cast and make sure the ref parameter is cast. Ref kind in. Yeah, you know what, dummy? You know what you forgot? Although I think I say it somewhere in here. Any out parameter must be initialized to default. But I didn't have it in the finalized list because I'm an idiot. So I knew I needed to do it. I just didn't have it in the list to remind me to do it the right way. All right, so, dear God. What now? So I write the method, get the constraints, put them in. Now here is where we need to add in all of the defaulty things. For each var parameter, out parameter, in method.parameters where ref kind is equal to ref kind of out. Okay. Because we've indented. Now we need to just say the name of the parameter. We need to say writer dot write line. Okay. We're going to say the name of the parameter out parameter dot name is equal to default. And that's it. We've initialized it. Good enough for me, right? Okay, so let's run the unit test. Let's see what that does first. Let's see if we get the right initialization. And then I'm gonna actually write a quick little badly named example because I wanna see if I just say default, no matter what. It will at least assign it without any errors. Now, of course, it's going to be null or if it's a value type you know, like a zero for an int, but at least it assigned it, at least it put it to something, you know, just like it was supposed to, like a good boy that eats his potatoes. Or vegetables? I don't know. Oh, no, no, normal. Okay, int ref ref out, you suck. Why didn't you do that? Oh, 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 the, I know, I know why, I know why, because I only did half of the story. I did the value builder, which means it's returning something I need to do. <sighs> the void builder. Okay, so where's the value builder? We need to do the same thing. Okay. So we do all the constraints and then we do this. Same freaking thing. No different. Right? Right. Run the test again. Let's see if it actually puts the things in there. I should actually change that interface too to return to have methods that actually return stuff. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm now starting to wonder if I should break those special method member stuff up because I think that's going to become a monster class if I don't, and I really don't want that. But hey, you know, having files that are thousands of lines long, that's okay. Apparently that's all right. There we go. Aren't you cute? <laughs> all right, well, I think it did the thing. So now let's see here. If I say something like, public interface IRT and I have a void out param where I say out int a 
and now I have a public class, C IRT, IRT, and I say implement it. I need to say A is equal to default, right? And that's okay. That's just all right. Let's actually turn this into a block body. And let's change this to actually returning a string. So that means we need to do this. And then we're going to say return hmm, go. And that's all right. It doesn't care. It wouldn't, no, not colon, semicolon. But yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I think I nailed that. Okay. All right, now let's come back here. Member scenario tests. I think I want to have like asynchronous tests, optional arguments tests, params tests. And yeah, let's do that. Let's create asynchronous tests. Okay. And that means I'm going to pull this out. Put that there, and we're gonna say public, public, static, class, asynchronous tests. Okay. And now, mock asynchronous methods. It's only one, I think. But that's good now. Okay. So that got rid of one thing here. All right. So now let's do. Um, optional arguments tests. Optional arguments tests. Okay. And so in this case, we're going to take these out and put that here. And then we're going to say public static class optional arguments tests. And we're going to grab that one and that one. I think those are the only two that we want. And we're going to put them here. And we're going to see, did we get the uh, suggestions? Or did I make it crash? And missing usings. Thank you. Takes you for freaking ever to do it. But beggars can't be choosers, I guess, or something to that effect. Okay, so now we want params. Params tests. I don't know. I'm not being very creative here. Params tests. Okay. Clear those out. And we're going to say I have params. Public static class params test. And why do you put that space there? Okay. Params are even not specified. Here we go. So that's that. So it wasn't like a ton of tests, but still, it's, I think it makes sense to uh, gather your suggestions and do it again, and then say add missing usings, and then wonder some more. <laughs> yeah, I crack myself up, and that is, that's the most important thing, Okay. So now we're going to say ref, we're going to just call this one ref and out, ref and out tests. Yes. There you go. There. Okay. So yeah, this actually, I think, I don't remember the order of stuff, but again, good to shut down and start up again. I think that I have been checking OBS, and of course, when I say this, I'm going to curse it, but I think one of the problems might have been is that I was still getting input from the the computer as audio, and I wonder if that would screw it up if like something actually came in as audio. I know in a couple of videos I've done relatively re recently, I did have that on, and I noticed I was picking up pings that were coming through Discord, and it was throwing me off because I was editing the video, and then I hear that burp sound, and I, and I quick go to Discord, I'm like, it's my kid or my wife texted me or something. And then I was like, oh, no, it was from that. <laughs> so it was throwing me off a little bit. Okay, um, let's go back 
into here. Get rid of those because I can't stand them. Don't ask why. I just don't. I don't know why it does that. And I don't care because I'm getting rid of them because I roll that way. All right, here's another big test. Does it fail? Is it going to fail badly? Are we doing bad things? Are we doing all the bad things? And stuff? God freaking... Exp <laughs> oh, you suck. 106. Okay, go to 106. At least I get this. Oh! I bet, I bet you were watching this. I bet you were watching this. And if I would have done live coding, there would have been things on the side going, you moron, you forgot the semicolon after your default. I bet you were. I bet, I bet that's what was going on here. It's a conspiracy. It is a conspiracy. Now, where would I? Oh, yeah, I got to do these in both places here. So wherever I said put in the defaults, you know, you got to put your semicolons in. Because if you don't put your semicolons in, you have problems. I'm really looking for a sandwich tonight for dinner. I feel like in a very sandwichy mood. In fact, I'm going to text my wife here for just a moment. I'm going to just say, hey, you know, JJ's is the closest place around here. Um, you know, but I really feel like um, I'm jonesing. BLT. That's the one that I. That, that's the one I'm always like going for. Sorry about that. I just I, I had to get my craving out. Okay, so I did that there, and I did that there. Okay, close it down again, and start it back up again, and we'll see. There is another piece to the puzzle that it will fail on. You don't know until you know. And you won't do something unless it works. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Let's try it again. Let's see if it works. I always take something that I think is going to be like a short thing and it ends up being a very, very time-consuming thing. But I had to do this. Had to do this. It was a moral imperative. Oh, it succeeded. Now let's see if the test runs. <laughs> and it passed. <laughs> and it passed. <laughs> Mock member with ref parameter. And callback. Now here is the big one. Okay. I want to have a static void ref argument callback, okay? That is going to take a ref int of a, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna set a equal to four, okay? Now, yeah, it's because always callback should look like it's taking a ref argument callback. We're gonna be passing in our ref argument callback. It, okay, it didn't fail. I had to wait for all the red to go away. Okay, now here's the big test. Assert R, no, multiple. Assert that value is equal to four because the callback should have been by ref. It should come in here. And does it actually change it? Yes, it does. It works. <laughs> See, here's the cool thing. You don't have to define the delegate anymore. If I go back to the way I was doing it, it seems like a small thing. But if you had this case, you had to define this. Okay? And you needed to define this, which you still need to do. Okay, But the nice thing, there's two nice things now. One, Rox defines the delegate for you, so you don't have to do that. And now with local methods, you don't have to, um, you, don't, you don't have to, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah. <laughs> I was just totally, totally having a meltdown there for a second. 
you don't have to declare it like as a private thing. You can put it locally in the method. So it's about as succinct as you're going to make it. You can't do that here though. That's the one thing because you can, you can only declare, well, you could declare, I guess, a new ref argument callback here if you wanted to. But the point is I can just do that here, pass that in here and do that. That is so sweet. And we got ref argument support. I mean, how much better would you want it? Um, let's do with ref parameters. Um, well, we're calling these ref parameters, but they're arguments to the method names, which is really, well, it's an argument when you're calling it. It's a parameter when you see, I'm, I'll just keep it like this. Okay, mock memory of ref parameter and generics, okay. So now I have to do ref with generics, okay? I'm gonna do an int and a string, okay? And I think the second one is what's gonna be B, yes. And that should be good, that should be good, except now we're gonna say this has to be a B, okay? Because now we're gonna say um, three, ref value with generics of an int and a string. Does it think that that's redundant? Except it's arguments. You can't infer the type. Oh, yes, I can. Which is even better. Run this. Let's see what this puppy does. Passes. Passes. Mock member with rep parameters and generics and callback. And callback. Static void ref arguments with generics callback. But watch what I do here. And I'm going to see int a ref string b. B is equal to C. C? Here's the thing. Yeah, we don't care about A, I know, but that's just because we don't care about A. Um, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to say B is equal to A to two string. Just, just to make it happy, like it's included and it's not being ignored. Well, what? Oh, shut up. Culture info. Current. Now are you happy? Thank you. Okay, now we're going to say callback here. Ref arguments. That worked. And uh, I was hoping it would and it did. Um, yeah, that's actually quite awesome. Um, the, the reason why I say that is because well, it's already inferred because I had to say that here that the callback has to be something that takes an int and a string. Mine does. And so now if I call this with generics and I say I pass it in with a B, but what should really be coming out of this is um, a three. So we're going to say the value is equal to, nope. Oh my God, not the Korean calendar. I have nothing against the Korean calendar, but that's not what I want. Does this work? And it does. Okay, I'm not going to do all the out tests here. I just want to do one. I'm just going to do one. Mock method without out parameter. Okay, so we're going to say an out argument, which again, arg any of int, we don't care. You could pass in anything you want and it doesn't matter, right? In fact, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna say I'm gonna make this three, right? But we're gonna say out argument, out, out var value. Yes. And then we're just going to assert that what should have happened is this should be default in this case. The value is equal to zero, okay? 
So what this should illustrate is that it doesn't matter what you pass in out argument, it's gonna come back as a zero. But it did get initialized and it does. Okay, I'm gonna do the other tests off screen because those should be fairly germane. But of course I'm gonna say that I'm gonna to report to you later. It took five hours to fi fix the other issues. But this is really nice. This is really, really good. I'm very, I'm very close to saying now that this is a, um, and I think I said with ref kind in, indicates an in parameter. Yeah, that really didn't. I still have to look at that. I still have to look at what does it actually mean to be a in parameter. Ref read only I thought was on the return. Um, but yeah, I, I need to check that out. I will do that on my own time. And if I really want to add support for that, I will, but I don't even know what that does. So in means covariant <laughs> to me. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, what, what would that actually do? I don't know. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is a very good ending to this. I have this almost completely done. And the next thing I'll do in the next episode is, let's see, I think I really need to handle then the makes. That's the next one because that, that's not going to be hard ish because I don't have to, I, I don't have to generate delegates or adornments or anything. All I need to do is um, generate the instance methods for the constructor that would be put on it. And then I just generate all the methods and the properties and everything else with the minimal amount of work. If it's a getter, I just return default. If it's a setter, I don't do anything. If it's a method, there's an out, I have to initialize it, but that's it. Um, if it returns a value, I just return default. And that's all I do. So um, yeah, it's it's it, I have to have it because I do have this ability to do makes. Um, and what makes are, in case you're wondering what am I talking about, it's just a way to say, I need to create some dummy object holder that is a mock but has no expectations built in. It doesn't do any state management, nothing. It doesn't care. It's just a way for you to say, hey, I know this method on my interface has to return something that implements another interface, and I don't care what that does, and I don't care what that is. I just want to make sure that that's the same value. I can use a make and, and just generate that, and that would work. Um, so that's, that's probably going to take two or three episodes, I would bet, but... Um, I would hope that that goes by fairly soonish. I do need to make another generator and a receiver for that. And yeah, but anyway, once I get that done, once I get this done, and once I get this done, the rest of these is just minor things. In fact, I could almost say push these past RC3 and I might just do that because I don't think for another RC3, um, that I care about this. And like the type problem, I might even just pass to pass 5.0 and just say, you know, I know this is a problem, but I don't know what the right way is to handle it. And the number of times that somebody would come up with this, I think you'd almost have to be sort of pseudo malicious to make this break. So I, I don't really know if I even care too much about that. So I might push some of these past RC3 and actually pass 5.0.1. In any event, Good time to end this episode. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.